I've been running a successful digital product shop on Etsy, selling websites and Canva templates, and part of that success was being able to upload high quality listings fast and efficiently. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do just that. We're gonna go over how to open a shop, how to add listings, create mockups, and share your products with potential customers. This video is relevant to any digital product you are selling from wall art to t-shirt designs to digital planners. Opening an online store might sound like a difficult task, but it should take you no more than five minutes. Just go to Etsy.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage and click sell on Etsy. You'll have to register with an email address and you can use your personal Gmail account if it's easier for you. Once you do that, you'll be prompted with a bunch of personal questions which you can answer or skip entirely and the first real page of the shop creator section is the shop preferences. Here, you'll have to set your shop language, your country, and currency. Next, you'll have to give a name for your shop. If you don't have a name yet, you could use a name generator like namelix.com or ask ChatGPT for some ideas on a shop name. This is all assuming that you already decided what you want to sell. If you haven't, you can check out my video on how to find successful niches for any industry up here and in the description. Next, you'll have to add your first listing and and don't worry, you don't need to have a product ready to sell just yet. You can add a random photo and fill out all the required fields randomly because we're going to come back here and delete this listing and nobody will ever see it. Next up, we have the how you'll get paid section. Here you'll have to fill out your tax details and add a payment method. For reference, Etsy charges a $0.2 listing fee, a 6.5% transaction fee for each sale and 15% for offsite ads should you decide to advertise your products and make a sale from those ads. Now in my experience, these fees are deducted from your revenue at the end of each month. If you have uploaded a listing in a specific month but haven't made a sale, Etsy will bill the $0.2 listing fee separately as an invoice at the beginning of next month and you'll have to pay the amount in 14 calendar days. Next, depending on the country you're living in, Etsy requires an ID verification, so you need to upload either a passport, a national ID or a driver's license. Finally, Etsy has a two-factor authentication system for logging in, so you can either receive an SMS or a phone call with a code and type that code in when logging in, or you can use an app called Google Authenticator, which you can download for iOS or Android. After this final step, your shop should be open. Now, I've experienced Etsy suspending any new shop I create without any explanation or reason given, and I've read that other users are experiencing the same. Now, the reason might be that Etsy needs some time to verify your details and they place your account on hold while they do so. If this happens to you, you can file an appeal using the link I included in the description and also raise a ticket to Etsy support to speed up the reactivation. Be prepared, however, that the reactivation could take about two weeks. Etsy customer support really isn't the best in the world, unfortunately. Once you have your shop open, you can access it from top of the screen right here by clicking on shop manager. Now, the first thing we need to do is delete the random listing we initially created. So you'll go to the left side of the screen here and click on listings. Then just go to this little gear icon under your listing and click on delete. Now, before you start adding your first real listing, you need to have a banner and a logo for your shop to make it look presentable and professional. A quick and easy way to get a logo is by going to logo.com and generating a logo based on your business name. This tool is completely free, easy to use and you'll have a logo done for you in minutes. For the banner, we can use the free version of Canva. Just go to canva.com, type in Etsy banner and choose one template that doesn't have the crown symbol in the bottom right corner. Customize it a bit and add your own business name and save it onto your computer. To add the logo and banner to your shop, just go to shop manager again and on the left side under sales channels, click the pencil icon to edit your shop. You can upload your logo and your banner by clicking on the camera icons next to each. Also, you want to make sure to add a brief description under your shop name to inform customers what you're selling and add a location to display as well. Congrats if you've made it this far, your shop is basically open. Now it's time to add your first listing. To do that, under shop manager, go to listings and in the upper right corner here, click on add a listing. Now Etsy have recently updated their listing uploader interface and I'm personally not a big fan of it. If you're not either, you can switch back to the old version on the top of the screen right Right here. I do think, however, that they will eventually remove the old version completely. So for the sake of this video staying relevant in the future, I'm just going to cover the new version for now. So the first thing we need to fill out is the title. 
and a good title should include a combination of keywords relevant to the product you're selling. To create a title like that, we're going to check how the top listings use their titles. So for example, if you're selling animal stickers, we'll search for animal stickers on Etsy.com. The first four results are ads, so you can skip those entirely and check out the next four listings below that. These are the listings that rank best organically when searching for stickers. And you're going to want to copy the titles of these listings and potentially add your own as well to get as close as possible to the 140 character limit. Obviously, rewrite the titles a bit to fit your product. Once you have your title, you need to upload listing images and a video of your product. The listing images could be actual images of your product or mock-ups. So for example, if you're selling digital wall art or t-shirt designs, you will need to create mock-ups for these products to showcase what that art would look like in a living room or what your designs would look like on a t-shirt. If you're selling stickers or planners, you don't necessarily need mock-up images. You can get away with showing just the images of your stickers and planners. However, in all cases, having high quality listing images can make or break your shop. 90% of buyers make their purchase decision based on the listing images, which is why I also recommend displaying some text-based information about what you're selling in those listing images, for example. So if you're selling stickers or wall art, make sure to specify in the listing images the dimensions of the products. You can do this easily in the free version of Canva by adding the text next to the images of your product. Now I'm not gonna go into full detail about listing images, I have an entire video dedicated to them coming up soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that tutorial. Next, you'll have to add a description of your product and again we're going to use the listings that rank best in our search results and modify the text a bit to fit our own product. Next if you're selling a digital product which buyers can personalize so for example custom made t-shirt design you can add an instructions box to your listing which customers can fill out to describe what exactly they need. Next is price and inventory. So for the price, you will need to do a market research and see what your competitors are charging for the same product and price yourself lower as a new shop to attract more customers. This is easier to do with digital products because you don't have any major costs other than the fees deducted by Etsy. For quantity, make sure to write 999 so you don't run out of stock. We're going to skip SKU because that's not relevant to digital products. Next, we have to fill out the details of the actual product you're selling. So first is core details. And if we go to add core details here, you'll need to select the type of item you're selling, which in this case is a digital file. Who made it? I did. What is it? It's a finished product. When was it made? If it's a custom order for a personalized design, then you select made to order. If it's a ready-made product, then just select the most recent year. Once you're done, click on apply. Next, you'll have to select the category your product fits in. So just go to add category and since we're selling a digital product, we'll just start typing digital and these are the options that pop up. You'll have to select a category that best describes your product. If it's a printable product like a wall art, you can go for digital prints. If it's a planner, then you go for planner templates and so on. You can skip this entire next section and head on over to tags. Here, you'll want to refer to the top ranking listings again. So we're going to open up a listing and at the very bottom of the page under explore related searches, you'll see a couple of tags here associated to that listing. You can copy these tags and add them to your own listing. Alternatively, there is a free Google Chrome extension called Copy Tasker, which lets you copy tags directly from other listings. Make sure to use all 13 of the available tags that Etsy allows. Next, we can set renewal options to automatic or manual. Every listing on Etsy is active for a duration of four months and this option allows us to automatically or manually renew that listing and pay the $0.2 renewal fee. Congrats if you've made it this far, now we have only two things left to do. Once you filled out all the details we just covered, we need to go back to the top of the page and under digital files upload our actual product. Etsy allows uploading up to five files and the total size limit is 20 megabytes. So if your digital product fits within these parameters, you can upload it directly here with the add file option. If your product consists of more than five files or it exceeds the 20 megabytes limit, you will need to upload it to a cloud storage service like Google Drive or Dropbox. Then you will copy the link to your uploaded product into a PDF file and upload that into your Etsy listing. So let's look at a specific example. If you're 
selling a digital wall art that is 50 megabytes in size, you can create a Google Drive folder for it, upload the file in there, and just click on these three dots here. Select Get Link, and under General Access, select anyone with the link and just copy the link. Next, you can create a Word or a Google Docs document and paste the Google Drive link in there. Now, obviously, you'd want to personalize it a bit, write a thank you heading, create a hyperlink, and so on. Once you're done, save the file in PDF format and upload it to your Etsy listing. Finally, you will need to decide if you want to run ads on your listings by enabling the feature this listing option. In my experience, Etsy ads are worth it because they help you gain traction faster and you can turn them off once you get your first sales in or potentially receive your star seller badge. Now this obviously depends on your niche. If you're selling in a less saturated market, it's much easier to rank organically with the right titles and tags. But if you're in a saturated market, Market like printable t-shirt designs, it's going to be difficult to rank organically no matter how good your titles and tags are. And that's it, that's basically how you add your first listing. Now, the key to success with digital products is to upload listings consistently over a short period of time. This should be your number one priority in the beginning because Etsy prioritizes shops that are active with consistent updates. Depending on what you're looking to sell, this can take weeks or months and might require about an hour every day dedicated to uploading listings. Alright, so that's been it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Take care and I'll catch you guys on the next one.